So we talked about measurements, right? You can measure some rates <coughs> to decrease your decrease degree of free, degrees of freedom value. Just a very quick overview on measurement of extracellular fluxes. For microorganisms, in lab conditions, you can grow your microorganisms by putting a certain amount of substrate, glucose, inside the environment. And then by measuring the density of your liquid solution, to identify if your organism is growing at a certain rate, or you can use specific kits to identify if it produces any, if, if it secretes, secretes any metabolites, such as ethanol, glycerol, etc. So, these extracellular metabolites, the metabolites that can be secreted from the cell, or that can be taken up by the cell, can be measured in laboratory conditions much easier compared to the measurement of the levels of intracellular metabolites, the metabolites that always stay within the cell that are not secreted out. So let me repeat, it is easy to measure, to quantify the rates of consumption of metabolites or the rates of the secretion of metabolites in lab conditions. So you can easily come up with such plots. So in certain times, you can get samples from your uh, medium, which includes your microorganism, and you can measure the amount of glucose, the amount of ethanol, glycerol in this environment. And also you can measure the uh, optical density of your solution. If you plot those, you will see how glucose is consumed by the cells over time and how biomass the density of the organisms increases, how the organisms grows, and how the concentration of ethanol, glycerol, or other secreted metabolites increase over time. Our goal is to come up with rates, not with the concentrations. A rate is defined as concentration over time. For example, millimole per hour is a rate. It can be concentration or amount, it doesn't matter. So here, for example, if you check the slope of this biomass plot, if you check its slope, the slope unit will be concentration over time, right? This so it will give us the rate. Once you have those plots, you can check the slopes, and the slopes will give you the rates of these exchange metabolites and biomass. You will also, from the sleep, from the sl uh, slope, you will predict the consumption rate of glucose. So the take home message is you can quantify the rates of metabolite uptakes or metabolite secretions uh, easily in the lab for your microorganism or for your cell lines. And then you can use this information in your metabolic modeling to decrease your degrees of freedom, for example. Now, let's see this hypothetical cell. Glucose is taken up. It is converted to some other intracellular metabolites, the metabolites that are not secreted out. And some of those metabolites formed inside are secreted out. So these are metabolites. Each conversion is labeled with a reaction ID. So we have reactions mostly controlled by enzymes. 
So the rate of change of B to C is uh, a rate, right? Or we are talking about the uptake rates or consumption rates. In metabolic modeling terminology, mostly for steady state based modeling, the word flux is used to refer to reaction rate. So flux means in metabolic modeling terminology, reaction rate, and usually the flux unit is millimole or micromole per gram dry weight. So it is normalized based on the mass of the cell per hour or minute. So this is the generic form of the rates we are dealing with uh, within this course. You can use fermentation to quantify those external uh, rates, the rates of consumption and of metabolites. So, which means that if you measure the rate of, let me clean this slide, if you measure the rate of glucose consumption as 5, so this means that glucose is taken up by the cell at a rate of 5, let's say, millimole per gram dry weight per hour. If we assume cell state based modeling, so which says that A will not accumulate in the cell over time, so a balance around A, the A over DT, is R1 minus R2. A is produced by R1, consumed by R2. This will be equal to zero, which means R1 will be equal to R2, right? So at steady state, if this is five, this will also be five, right? You don't know how much of five will go here, will go here. But at the end, based on mass balancing, if we are given that R9 is zero, let's say this is given. So through the mass balance, R6 also must be zero. And all the coming carbon here must go to G. And we can predict that the rate of production of G will be 5, 2. So this is how we use mass balancing to predict rates. the flux balancing. So the key point here is we can use minimum measurements to identify all fluxes in a given cell. So we had a single measurement here, just glucose consumption rate. And we are given that in this specific condition, the cell doesn't produce any F. And by using mass balancing, we were able to predict the rate of R2, the rate of R10, the rate of R6, etc. We were able to predict reaction rate or fluxes. And we know that the coming carbon is going like this to G. 